Okay, well today we are doing a haul video and this haul video is going to be everything that I bought the other day with Sue as well as some stuff that Andrew bought from Eric forever ago Yeah. that kind of got shuffled under the table in our sunroom and recently reemerged. We are not going over all of it today. No, um, some of it. We're going to go over some of it because some of it has been listed so we want to tell you a little bit about it. Um, there's probably roughly six to eight banana boxes full of stuff from over two weeks at the flea market that never made it out that never got hauled never got listed nothing it just sat and sat and sat and yeah so we now, really don't know what's under there now we're starting to pull things out so we can get to it and, yeah, and it's getting listed so that stuff's getting listed um but behind us here you're probably like what are those um you'll find fresh out tomorrow <laughs> Those are fresh boxes that we just bought, and you're going to find out tomorrow. And my car is full right at the moment Yeah. From Sunday. Yeah. Lots of inventory. Yes. But anyway, uh, let's talk about the stuff that I got with Sue. So I bought a total of 12 items, and I believe my total spend was $96. I said it in the video yesterday. It was either $94 or $96, somewhere right around there. But I did get a total of 12 items. I believe that works out to $7 and something cents. Uh, a piece so if we're cost averaging you know it works out so what should we start with uh let's start with this piece mm. i have seen this before and i actually have bought this before it wasn't this exact vase though the piece i bought was just a round little rose bowl but it mm. had pine cones on it and i saw it and I thought it was good quality glass. I liked the pine cones. I liked the iridescence. I bought it. I sold it without knowing what it was. I saw this piece. I saw the ruffled uh, top and I thought, I know who makes that. It's Fenton. Um, so I did do a little research. It is made by Fenton. Some of the pieces with the pine cones painted on them are marked by artists from Fenton. Just looking at the opalescence and the glass, that is something that is a key Absolutely. Stand out for Fenton. Uh, and it's that ruffle that gave it away, and it was the shape of the vase. The last piece that I had. No mark. No, no mark. No sticker. No sticker. No nothing. I nope. would look at this, honestly, from what I've learned from you and from picking stuff up at the market, I would I would assume Fenton on this immediately. And that's what I, I saw that, and, and I sunk immediately. I'm like, oh my gosh, that last piece I got. The same exact iridescence, the same exact pine cones. That one was Fenton as well. So whoever bought that, now you know. Uh, unless you already knew and you were bidding on it because you knew it was Fenton and I did. <laughs> <laughs> Which is totally possible. Um, but this piece is Fenton and it sells, you know, there's some listed right now for like $75. I would expect probably to get around 50 to 60 for it. Um, like I said, those are listed for 75. I don't, I didn't actually look up comps for it. Um, but seeing as how that's listed, I would usually go a little bit lower. So I would say 50 to 60 for that. But it is a really nice piece, especially now that it's winter. And that white that white iridescence is perfect for, mm -hmm. for snow and yeah. cold. And I like it. I yeah. think it's a great piece. So I got that. I also bought That's pretty. some art glass. Now I did send this off to my friend Mary. And she does specialize in Murano. And I sent her these pieces and she immediately knew those are Murano. Um, so both of these are... And they're full of adventuring. Yes, they're they're gold flecks. Av adventuring. I don't think it's adventuring, <laughs> it's adventuring. It is adventuring. Um, so these pieces are Murano. Um, I paid 24 for this one, and I paid $8 for this one, but they are both made in Murano. And they're just beautiful pieces. There's no chips or cracks on them. So um, I don't I don't know. There's minimal scratching. What was what was that tidbit Eric was telling us about oh, the adventuring? Eric said that up until I think a, the a 19th certain point in time that there was no other company that could duplicate the adventuring process that Murano used. Yes. So from a certain point in time back, definitively 100%, if it's got the adventuring in it it would have been Murano yes. made because they were the only glass house. When you worked for them in that glass house, you lived on that island, you could never leave. It was a proprietary 
glass house and they didn't want their secrets getting out and they kept it there for so long yeah. um it was it was interesting so and, and that stuff just sparkles i know that just it's just insane they're beautiful pieces and I, I was so thrilled to find them. I was like, oh my gosh, look at this. And I originally found the first one and then I got down and I was looking and that's when I spotted the second one. So that was really exciting. I love finding her glass hidden on Yeah, the just, just that, you know, honestly, <laughs> after hearing that little story about it, it actually kind of makes me like the glass a little bit more. Yeah, it's, it's it, a fun story. Yeah, it's got yes. neat history to it. You cannot leave the island because you know our secrets. <laughs> Sounds like a good movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so another piece I grabbed was this, which you probably recognize as Eldrith. Um, this is a piece of Eldrith pottery. It is marked on the back and dated 2008. It is also marked second. So we've talked about seconds before. Um, when they mark it second, it means that it was basically a reject piece. It was not a piece they were particularly proud of, but rather than just trash it or get rid of it, they're, they're selling it as a second. Yeah. And they're marking it as this is a second. It's not one of our proudest pieces. Right. Um, but... I like that they still sell it and you know. And you can still get it and they don't just toss it away because some of those pieces still are pretty cool looking. Yeah, yeah. This looks like a big spoon rest. It is, it is a spoon rest, but I thought that was a nice piece. I was I was excited for that one. Um, for this piece, I would probably expect to get 12 to 15 for it. Um, but I just, I have a thing for Eldrith. We actually have another piece that I pulled out of these boxes last night that's going up maybe tonight or tomorrow. <laughs> Little teaser. <laughs> Uh, we've got this piece right here, and I can tell you certainty that I paid two dollars for this. And the reason it caught my eye is because of that design on it and the Art Deco lines. Um, it does have a hole in the bottom, and so I brought it home and I said, Andrew, send a, p a picture of this to Eric and ask him what it is. And now this is for a condensed or evaporated milk. Mm -hmm. I guess they're the same thing. Yeah. Uh, but for the most part, it, it would have come with a bottom, an underplate. Right. And, uh, I'm not really exactly sure how it would work. I, I, I I'm wondering like, why is there a hole in it? Wouldn't it just leak out? I don't know. I, I I'm really no curious. Yeah. And I was trying to ask Eric like, well, how would it, and he, he's like, I don't know. He's like, I just know that's what it's for. I'm like, I know for but sure how does it work? I have to know. Yeah. I know for sure you can't use it to store your marbles in. <laughs> No good for that. It's not a good change holder oh, either. Oh gosh, yeah, it's it's just it's a really neat piece. I loved it's I love the painting on it. And yeah. it's, it is signed by the artist, but not by the manufacturer. Um, but I, I really I think I have seen this. I like the silver. Oh, I can't think of it. I like that. I like that. Yeah, but I have seen this shape before, and I believe we've sold creamers and sugars with this shape, and I just can't think of the manufacturer at the moment. Uh, but this piece right here, I would probably expect to get like fifteen for. Um, I saw some listed that were listed for about 30. They did not have their underplate. I don't know. I, I feel like it's if it came with an it's... underplate, but also I don't know what its purpose would be nowadays or if people yeah. would still use them. Yeah, I mean, I, I've never even heard of one. Yeah, but I've seen them before and I was always like, that's weird, you know? Yeah. But they've never really caught my eye like this one with the paint, with the Yeah, grapes. the paint job on this one is so phenomenal. Yeah, I have that. That's cute. So let's look at this. Now this has caught my eye before and I've left it behind. And I finally decided, you know what? I'm just gonna grab that. I believe it's a it's a candle votive. Um, you put a candle in it and mm -hmm. you know, the light shines through. I don't think it's terribly old, but I, I like just, the way they I cut the glass. I thought it was really neat. Yeah, it's it's got a satin finish and it is cut to clear. Um, it has the white on the outside, and it is, it's cut to clear, but it has that satin finish. And now the gra the, the bottom um, is... ground. Yeah. And smooth very nicely. It's just a really interesting piece. And so it was one of those, for $4, I would buy it and try to figure it out. Um, because I thought it was a neat, a neat piece. It is, I like it. Watch it be like party light. Probably is. It's probably party light. You guys are going to be in the comments. Yep, that's party light. And I'm like, it's still really neat it. looking, though. I still like it. Got me again. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I also grabbed this little toothpick holder. We have done well with toothpick holders in the past. If 
focuses for you guys. There we go. Uh, we've done really well with toothpick holders in the past. Now I know it is melt glass, but I made the exception for it because it is a toothpick holder. And the pattern on this is inverted strawberries because the strawberries are kind of inverted and it has the invert. I'm not sure which company makes inverted strawberries, but there are a lot of pieces online with that pattern. Not very many of them are attributed to a specific glass, uh, house. glass house. Yes. Yeah, so I just thought it was neat and I thought, you know, I think I need to have that. So I grabbed that as well. I grabbed this guy. Over um, Christmas, the holidays, we did really well with Santa's in sleighs. <laughs> now spring's coming. <laughs> <laughs> now we've got Easter coming. And I saw this, this little chick in a sleigh. I don't know why he's in the sleigh, but he is. It's a little chick in a sleigh. And I thought, you know, we, we did pretty well yeah. with those Santas and I'll just give this, give this a shot. So he, he is, I believe made by Westmoreland. And there was another company that made a very similar chick that is more rare, but I'm pretty sure this one is Westmoreland. And it was painted gold at one point in time. I believe it's early Westmoreland. Uh, for this piece, I would expect probably around 20 to 25 for it, possibly more because we're coming up on Easter. He's cool. He's I like cool, him. I like him too. <laughs> um, here's another piece I grabbed. and. The only reason I haven't listed this yet is because I cannot find one like it. Well, and, and I'm having a hard time with it too because I actually sat for about an hour and I tried all kinds of Google and Me searches. too. Me too. And to me, with the cactus in the background, I would immediately think Roadrunner. But I can't. It, but it could be some it's other. Not marked. It could be some other kind of desert bird. I'm thinking it's a desert bird. You think it's a desert bird? I think it's if a desert bird. If you know bird. what this is, please leave it in the comments because we are completely and utterly It's driving stuck. me nuts. And I'm not, I can't list it without knowing. But it's got a matte pink glaze on it. And it's unmarked. Unmarked. It probably came in a console set. There was probably is two it? candlesticks in a bowl, I'm yeah. assuming. Usually that's how they came. But honestly, oh, it's driving me nuts. I know. <laughs> I can't stand it. Um, I, I'm, I honestly, without any comps, I don't know what I, that would sell for. I mean, as a candlestick with a bird on it, I would guess maybe 20 to 25, but maybe it's made by some rare company and it's worth more than that because we can't find it anywhere. I don't know. Um, here's another piece I got. I'm going to try to lift it up without. It's pretty. This is out of my wheelhouse. I do not typically buy teacups and saucers. That's usually Andrew. He usually brings them home like, hey, look what I got. And I'm like, oh, great, teacups and saucers. Uh, they're just not really my thing. I, uh, they scare me a little bit, I think is, is fair to say, because I don't know enough about them to know which ones are valuable, which ones are not. And a teacup that looks really pretty to me could be worth like, two dollars so i tend to steer clear of them however this one interested me because of the heavy gold the hand painting and the fact the mark on the back was impressed typically that is older porcelain and so i thought you know what this is older um it's and very it's very too. nicely made and it's got this fancy stand I think I'm going to take a chance on that and I'm going to pay $19. So I'm so glad you did. <laughs> so I brought it back. Uh, Andrew actually did a little research on it. He researched the name and it is German. Ike. Ike. A-I-C-H. Yep. And it is German and that is one of their earliest marks. 1850s. 1850s. So it is an older piece and I think it was sold for 45 yeah. To 50, isn't that what you found out? There were similar uh, made cups and saucers, different designs, and they were in the $30 and up oh. range. Okay. But the better the painting, the nicer the detail, the more gold on it, I would I would guess this is probably a $40, $50 set. 
this is this is amazing. Yeah, I'm really glad obviously you got somebody this. really liked it and valued it to put it in that fancy stand. Too. I would not be heartbroken <laughs> if it sat on our shelf. Honestly, too bad it's already listed. <laughs> um, so is that everything that I got there at the antique mall with Sue? Um, I don't know. I you feel, tell me. I feel like it is. I think so. Okay. Everything else looks like what yeah, I pulled out of, of the boxes. We might be like halfway through it and I'll be like, oh wait, no. But I think that's everything. That is everything that I got with Sue. I think we're gonna do very well with that. Oh, we talked about the Murano. I didn't even talk about what I could expect to get for it. Um, for those, I would expect probably to get 40 to $50 a piece for the bowls. So you, you can sit right there. My total spend was $96, and for the two bowls, I'm gonna get about 100. So I think we're gonna we're gonna do all right. Yeah, I think it's <laughs> with right. everything together. Uh, but I, I I'm pretty pleased with everything that we got there. Um, that ha just happens to be one of my favorite antique shops. It's really it's really close by too, um, so we often overlook it. We usually travel like 40 minutes to go where we're going. We don't usually stick close by, but when we do, Bedford Street Antiques is is typically where we go. Yeah. Um, so anyway, enough about that. Let's talk about what we pulled out from under our sunroom table. Let's get this out of the way because this is really big and I don't know if they can't see it yet. <laughs> <laughs> this is really cool though. I know. I want to keep that so bad. Oh, uh, nope. This is really neat. This I is, want uh, to keep it. Heather Valley Antiques Appraisals and interiors and yes. interiors antiques appraisals and interiors heather valley is a double-sided vintage wood sign handmade hand painted finished, they never finished the black on the bottom but the pencil stencils there um the top's got two, one two three holes already drilled in it for a metal <laughs> mounting bracket it's really cool this this would be a cool decoration piece um this was one of those items where eric was like here why don't you take this and See if this will get you. See if you can get rid of this. This is really cool. And I was like, yeah, this is really cool. I like it. I really like that. I think so. I can get rid of that. So, I believe it should already be listed. It's not though. But it should. Because be. I don't think it should be. But it should be. I think it should stay with it's us. It's going to be. It's not going it to is. be. It is. It'll be up. Don't expect it to be. Listed. I'll put it up personally. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> I win. All right, so what else we got? Oh, that's that's cool. That's signed. Yes, now this piece is really, really neat. I was actually pretty excited about this. This is made by Higgins Glass, and it is signed Higgins. I've heard Higgins before. I've never come across the glass before, but some of their larger plates can go for really good money. Um, this is a smaller plate, but it is, it is very nicely made. And it looks like dandelions. Yeah. I just thought it was really pretty. And yes, it is marked Higgins on the bottom in gold. Very nice piece. Now, a lot of this stuff I, I didn't really look up. It was just pulled out of the box. It's not your typical, we're unboxing it right now, but it is yeah. like... Stuff we've been working on. Yeah. Trying to get so, trying to get caught up, cleaned up. Yeah. So I'm sorry if I'm not on my game like, oh, this is worth this, this is worth that. There are several, <laughs> pieces, there are several pieces here that are just like, I don't know because they're unique. This is cool. Um, and this is stuff that Casey has been listing, so. We've got this little... Pineapple. Yeah, little condiment jar. This is actually really neat. I like that. Jelly jar, maybe? Yeah, jar. probably a jelly jar. A condiment jar of some sort. It still has this original spoon, which is neat. And I believe she has this listed as Indiana. But I'm not seeing a mark on it. I could be wrong. I'm not looking at the listing right now. But I... I'm not one for milk glass, but I do like the pineapple. Mm -hmm. I like the shape of that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's a good figure. And I, I like that it's milk glass. I don't think I'd like it in a different color glass. I don't think so either. I, th I think it looks good that way. Um, this guy right here. Now, this is the type of milk glass that I'm not really a fan of. Mm. <laughs> I believe this is Westmoreland. Yes, it is marked with a W. Um, this vase right here is your just typical, ordinary grape design. It's milk glass vase. It's... I dare I say, the boring kind of milk glass. Um, just because it's it's just grapes and white. Yeah. And footed. Um, but, you know, it looks it looks good in decorating. But for resale, if I was to find this... I think that was one of those things where I just grabbed the whole entire box of yeah. stuff and, and it wound up in there. 
Yeah, I think, I'm okay with that. I think they sell for, for like 15 to 18. I could be wrong. I'm not really up for on... what it cost us. We'll still wind up making a couple bucks on it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not, yeah. and I'm not really up on the milk glass prices right now, so I could be wrong. But, um, these are really cool. Are these bottles. Oh, so, yeah, oh, you can. Yeah, you oh, can I don't do know those. anything about these. That, you're the bottle guy. Usually, usually these are marked Wheaton, but these are not marked Wheaton, so these are probably more or less made in China or Japan. They're shaped like violins. Um, but Wheaton made a lot of figurals. Now, these are okay. They're not very, they're not worth a whole lot, but the decorative purposes. Cobalt blue yes. in the window, especially when you've got something figural, you can always get a few bucks out of it. Yes. Um, and again, don't go out of your way to buy them. If you see them at Goodwill and they're four and five dollars, don't go out of your way to buy them for resale. Um, I, I'd expect maybe five to ten for the pair. That's that's about it. So. But they would re look really cool in like a violin shop in the window. They would. They would. Any any kind of music shop. Yeah. Um, but or anybody that likes music. So. I like them. Or cobalt blue. Um, we've got. An open sugar and a creamer. Floral. Now, someone in my comments pointed out the fact that, you know, we come a lot across a lot of these um, European sugar bowls that are open. And the point they made was that a lot of the times they used cubes. Mm -hmm. And so that's why they were open sugars, because you could easily take out the cubes. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's really neat. Now I get it. So, these are made by Staffordshire, made child. in England. I like those. Those are cool. Um, Let me do these real quick. Okay. Let's get these we out of the way. We already did that. We didn't do these. <laughs> you get so confused. Well, whatever. We didn't do these. Okay. These are cool. These are hand blown. I like those a lot. Um, this one is etched. The handles are hand blown and hand applied. The top is pewter, the handle is pewter, and then there is a glass lens on the top. This one has a colored lens. Like a cranberry glass mm -hmm. lens. This is, this has a, I want to say that's painted on there. That is not, I don't think that's a transfer. I can't tell. I can't really tell. It's. It's tough. In any case, that is in Croatia, Serbia. It's a famous church. Okay. It is a famous church. Um, I did look that one up, so that's kind of cool. You know what you're doing again? You're not holding it in the video. Yeah, I am. I'm over. You were in a second ago. Oh. Uh, <laughs> all right, fine. I did let him know in your comments. I'm sorry. I'm something. not used to looking. I don't look at the screen <laughs> because if I look at the screen while we're filming, it looks like I'm looking off into the distance and I look like a... <laughs> so. I will hold them up. For okay, you. there you go. But they're in beautiful condition. Um, I'd expect them to be at least 40 to $50 a piece. Those are so pretty. They are stunning, stunning examples. And it's really hard to like really capture them with the ring light. I'm not gonna lie. I just love that cranberry. I know, that lid. lens on the yeah. top of the lid. Usually the lids are solid yes. pewter. Uh, much like this one here, this is a barrel shape with a monogrammed pewter lid. Um, this one, I believe, is GH or HG. HG yeah. Wells drank out of this, maybe. <laughs> then sometimes you will get a stein that has a solid flat lid with a design on it. This one is really cool. It's got like a pine cone finial for your thumb to grab onto. And then sometimes you have one that has a finial on top of... I love this one. You have one that has a finial on top of the I lid. Like this However, one. this one is missing its finial. But the rest of the stein is just disgusting epicness. I can't describe it. I might have to keep it. No, it's got to get listed. Somebody <laughs> needs this in their life. We can't keep this. It's dated 1909. Um, it has an owl wearing a pre-World War I styled German helmet with a light 
attacking a man who's drunk and passed out in a cemetery. Um, there's just so much, and, and somebody's dancing, singing in the rain on there. It's, it's, yeah, I, I don't, I don't get it. I'm, I'm wondering if it's one of those crazy, like, German ethical, oh, moral yeah. stories. Oh, I bet it is. That, that's. And it's got something up here. It says, uh, I don't know what that says. It's something to do with, I have to, I have to try to translate here, it's, that. It's got a mark here. There's something here. It's got like, and then it, it's got a signature on it. Yeah, I've got to do a Henrik. little bit. Yep. Heinrich Schlitt. I think that is so cool. And Geschutzt is the, looks like the uh, pottery maker. I love that style. But this is, this is I'm killer. really not into signs, but if I was. I'm just really curious as to the what one. the finial would have been on this. Does it screw it? Or is it broken off? Let's see. That is not threaded, it's broken off. Oh, okay. Yeah. Bummer. I wonder if you can replace the lids. You can. You could you can have a jeweler because it's pewter, it's soft stuff, but you don't really want to take this off. This is original. Now if you could find an example of this and figure out what the finial was, and if you found a damaged one of these, you can yeah. have a jeweler exchange the the lid for you. Ah. Somebody that works with, with, with metal, pewter. Yeah. yeah. That's really neat. I like that sign. But I'll list it. That thing is, yeah, with the owl attacking the guy with the flashlight. I'm sure it's not actually a flashlight. I don't know. Maybe it's a Polish flashlight. It's solar powered. Is that like, does that mean something? <laughs> what? You've never heard Polish jokes? Oh my god, I can make Polish jokes all day. I've heard them all. It's okay because he's Polish. I'm Polish. Don't be offended. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so this right here is McCoy. The pattern on it is bamboo and palms. And uh, this piece right here, I would expect to get probably 25 to 30 for. I like that. I do too. I love the color. Yeah. It's a really nice piece. Um, right here, you want to talk about this? Ooh, Hubbly. Yeah. Nice uh, piece of 1930s Hubley. Hubley made cast iron toys, which we'll see some of that stuff coming up. Just woo -hoo. Um, But Hubley also made these bookends. These are a cast bronze. Um, there is only a single. I only have a single. Um, Still neat. That's all I got for you at the moment. Uh, now, there are, there are copies that are not Hubley. Um, the Hubley has the 213 mark on the back. That is, that is, it's not actually marked Hubley, mm -hmm. but the 213 is their mold. And the detail is much better on these than the copies. The mm -hmm. copies look really washed out and they don't pop as much as the pirates on here. And the detail just, and they, this just, just sticks out so much better. Somebody did a very poor copy job when you see the copies. Interesting. That's new. Here, we have a dish. It actually kind of looks like a like a jack in the pulpit a little bit. It does. Yeah, I like that shape. Um, this is considered moonstone, and the reason it's considered moonstone is because it has that white opalescent edge. With hobnails. With hobnails, yes. Yes, good job. Good job, Andrew. Uh, this piece right here, I'm not sure who it's attributed to, but I would expect this to go for like 15 to 20. It's really pretty. I love that. I do too. And I like that it's got the extra detail on the back here. Yeah, uh, it's a really interesting shape. I don't think I've ever seen that shape before, honestly. Yeah. It's a nice dish. Shape does kind of look familiar, though. Jack in the pulpit. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like agree. Like a really big jack in the pulpit. Because normally they're vases and they're all like thin. Yeah. Oh. He's having fun with his toys. Yeah, he is. <laughs> That's one of the ones that was sent to us. Isn't it? No, not that no. one. That's his coconut. Ah, that's okay. <laughs> the other one's hanging next to it. Um, this piece right here is Nippon. Oh. Ha! It ended. Perfect timing, too. <laughs> um, this piece right here is Nippon. Um, it is marked hand painted Nippon on the bottom. And indeed, it is hand painted. 
Sometimes I like to check because sometimes it's only half hand painted, but they, they still mix it up. Call it yeah, yeah, hand yeah, painted, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, no, 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 no. It's only partially You're being hand tricky. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> but this does appear to be completely hand painted, which is good. But it is a nice dish. It's very colorful. I love the colors in it. And this piece right here, I would expect probably to get 18 to 24. And there's your Nippon mark right there. It does say hand painted Nippon. Another piece is this one right here. And this is made in Japan. Just a nice landscape scene with some florals. Oh, I thought, I'm looking at the vase through my viewfinder. I thought that was a flamingo, but it's not. It's a pink flower, so. <laughs> it's a nice vase. I like the shape of it. It's got a nice shape, but it is made in Japan, so it's lighter than the Nippon piece because it had to be marked in English. It's probably mm -hmm. post 1920s. This is cute. Yeah, that's a nice hobnail piece. I don't know who makes that. Is it's it marked? Good. No, it probably had a stopper. It's got some crudeness to it. Look at the hobnails right here, where they're just kind of like... Yeah, but it is a mold. Spread out. I like the color. I do too. It's got a nice color. This piece, I would expect probably to get 12 to 15 for. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've got another one of these little guys. Yeah. So these things are actually miniature punch bowls. I can't remember if they were salesman samples or if they were for dolls. Do you remember? We, we've had one before. It was a milk glass one. This one's clear, clear obviously. Yeah. Um, but I can't remember if we ended up doing the research and they were for salesman samples or for dolls. But yeah, we're gonna were have to go back and do it again. West Maryland, maybe. I can't remember everything. It's impossible. I can't remember. Um, I think they sell for about twenty to thirty dollars, depending on what glass they're made of, because they come in different colors. Obviously, our last one was milk glass. I think they come in amber and just about every color. So I'm not sure. The clear glass probably isn't as desirable as, say, blue. Yeah. <laughs> These actually look. Those are nice. Look really nice. Clear little salt cellars. Those are nice. I think they're EAPG. Yeah, in the box. Yes. Is that a price tag for $125? That's what it looks like. I hope that's not what the original <laughs> price was of that. And maybe that's a price tag that fell into wow. the box, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Those are some expensive salt cellars. There's some. Uh, Limoche. 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 We've got a Limoche dish and little dishes. Oh, Theodore Havland. This is transfer. I'm, I'm not sure what these are. And I know that sounds crazy, but I just listed uh, some Nippon last night, and it was the celery dish with the little salt cellars. I don't know if these would be salt dips as well, even though they're Limoges. Hmm. Hmm, or if they're just little sauce dishes. Don't know. I might have to research this. Yes, you must. But are they all Limoges? I know what that is, though. Yes, I know you know what that <laughs> is. It's Haviland. Yes, that is Haviland. Uh, visitors in the meadow? No, meadow visitors. Meadow visitors, whatever. You had it wrong. <laughs> Close enough. So this pattern right here um, is made by Haviland. Limoges. And as you can see, there are lots of butterflies on it. Everywhere. That's a nice big bread plate. It is. It's a really nice plate. Oh, come on, focus. There we go. And you can see there's flowers and there's just butterflies decorating it. It is marked H and Co, which is Haviland and Company Limoges. And the pattern is called Meadow Visitors. And we actually come across it quite a lot. Um, ours typically sell for like 20 to 25, but I have seen them sell for as much as like 50 to $60. But those I'm assuming are listings where people list it up as a buy it now and then they sit on it for a very long time. Mm -hmm. We typically run our list, our listings, our auctions, we start them at four and run them for five days. So they're not there when that person comes on looking and they see a buy it now for 50 bucks and they buy it for, you know, the 50 bucks. Yeah. Ours is up for that little window and it usually sells for 25, which we're okay with because we yeah. don't have that much in it. Enamel, is it marked? 
Mm-hmm. I can't read that. You can't read that. Nictisoff. Copper enamel. Mm-hmm. It's a nice piece. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look that name off. I've never, never. No, I've never heard of that. I don't do much in metals. I glass in China. I just, I just <laughs> thought the enamel with the fruit oh on yeah, the it's copper, really nicely done. Like it's 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 totally like modern. Yeah. Looking. No, it's a really nicely done piece. So I don't know. I have nothing to compare it to at the moment. Um, I've got a few items left in this box here. Wow, we made quick work of that, didn't we? I know, that's great. <laughs> oh, here's, here's a pretty piece. A nice little basket. I am, um, again, the cobalt blue. I've been digging the cobalt blue, and this they actually had a $150 price tag on. Oh my. This looks like it's got a a mark on it, maybe, under there. Oh, it's pondled. It's, it's hand blown. It's a ground pommel for pommels. Maybe that's why they thought it was worth so much? Uh, I think that's an older Ooh, piece of glass. That's so, like, light. Yeah, that's an older piece of glass. There's lots of bubbles in that's, that. That's Ooh. why it's a $150 price tag on it. The glass market at one time would have would have bared that price for that piece of glass. I've got my hand behind it because I'm looking through the thing. I'm like, wait, why is my hand not in the right place? Oi. That is really nice, though. Yeah, and the bubbles and the crudeness Let's to it. Let's see if we can that sticker back and show them the bottom the panel yeah that's a polished panel on that that's that's great that is cool i want to say if i had to guess age on this glass you're probably looking at 1860s 1850s 1860s glass. there's a big pot stone in the glass yeah that's cool stuff. And you can see how it was spun too. Mm -hmm. When you when you hold it up to the light, when they were blowing yeah. it and spinning it, some of the bubbles are oblong this way as it was spun, mm -hmm. which is really cool. I like that. That's a beautiful piece of glass. And I didn't see any damage to it. No nips or chips I or dings on the edge. This is a cute piece with that spiral stem. Yeah, I think we've had a piece like this before. I want to say we have too. It looks very familiar. Yeah, these typically sell for 12 to 15. I think we've had it in green. This is killer. I like that. This is this is a perfume bottle, but what's cool about this is it is signed and numbered. What's it signed? I can't get the loop out. It's not a matter of the loop, it's a matter of catching it right in the light. Costa, is it Costa Boda? That's it, Costa Boda. Like a boss. That's it, that's exactly what that is. Ta-da! Just admit you're impressed. You just recognized the name. I just saw the K-O-S-T-A. I couldn't Boda. read the second part, but if it's Costa, I'm assuming the last part is probably gonna be Boda. So what does that mean? So you remember that little girl looking at the moon that I gave to Juliet's teacher? Yes. Costa Boda. Costa Boda, okay, okay. Um, value on a piece of Costa Boda? I couldn't tell you, I haven't done that much research. I gave that piece away. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that was valued at about $65, $70. Okay, so there is value to Costa Boda that yeah. you can tell. Well, that dish, that big heavy bowl that Walter was talking about this morning, that, yes. used, that was Costa Boda. Okay. But that was okay. more modern than the girl looking at the moon. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. That thing weighed a ton too. This thing weighs, this thing right here, you see the size of this? This is like maybe max four inches tall, max, and max about two and a half inches wide, and like maybe an inch deep. This it's thing really pretty though. This thing weighs. It's got a splash of color. I don't know if you saw that when I did the close up, but it does have a splash of purple glass in there. It's, it's yeah, it's like a smoky purple, and it just comes up like a stripe. That's really neat. And it goes down along the bottom there, yeah. Hopefully we can capture that in photos for eBay. Here's another one of those fancy little plates that's done up all fancy, but this one's marked HM hmm. or WH. Oh. Mmm. The conundrum. 
But this is more of an applied. This isn't like a in the glass decorated. Right. Yeah, you can actually feel it. Yeah. It's like it's um well, like you said applied. But it the feels initials like sandy. The initials. Yeah. I, I, I'll have to look that one up. Yeah, we're going to have to do a little more research. Kind of reminds me of getting that. research as we dig things out. It kind of reminds me of that lacy glass that I had recently. Ah, yes, yes. This is cool. This is Amoje. Of course, I know that. Amoje. Amoje. <laughs> of the USA. <laughs> it's not Limoje, it's Amoje. Amoje of the USA. This is really cool, though. See, Casey asked me if it would have had a lid, and I don't believe it would have. I don't know what this is. I don't know what it is either. We've had these before. I feel like it's an Eric question or a viewer question. If you know what this is, put it in the comments below. Put it in the comments below. I, honestly, I don't know. I, I would. Yeah. I would want to say. I just. I don't even know. Because if you don't tell us what that is, she's gonna beat me. I will. Unmercifully. All the time, especially when he brings home full scraps. Or more milk glass. Um, <laughs> Actually, this is a really cool looking piece. That is piece. a really nice piece. <clears throat> it's complete. It's got the... Is that the... a console mark on the bottom? Why, yes it is, my dear. Oh my goodness, will you look at that? That would probably make it EAPG, right? Mm, it's, it's an early piece. Yeah. Milk glass is not my forte. It never has been. It's not mine either because I usually avoid it. But no, this is actually a really nice piece. I'll make an exception for this. Okay. <laughs> well, good. Uh, look at me making all these exceptions lately. Cranky, cranky lady. Cranky lady. Uh, it's a bookend. It was probably an Amish man and an Amish woman. Ah. Um, but we seem to do okay with single bookends. Yes, People yes. People like them for decoration. Well, you or... can always prop them up on the end of mm -hmm. the bookshelf. Yeah. Which I never even thought of. Yep. <laughs> and this is really cool. I just, I liked the glass on this. This is an uber, uber old. Um, it's EW Inc. is the maker of the bottle. It's a witch hazel. It probably would have had a stopper. It feels yeah. like it's... The ground? Nah, it's not polished. Hmm. Maybe it was a cork? Probably. Which hazel? Back bar bottle. Barber barber shop barber yeah. shop counter bottle. That's neat though. I like that. Not a back bar. I'm thinking of the liquor ones. Never mind. Shows what's on my mind. <laughs> Just coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh but, boy. Yeah, no, I like that. Uh I think that's it from this stuff that I had pulled out for Oh wait, no, these guys. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, they're actually, I think they're listed right now. They are listed right now. These two little figurines. They're beautiful. Focus. Yes. Now, there is something tricky about these guys. They are made to look like German figurines. And I, when Casey was looking at them, I told her, more than likely, there is probably a German version of similar figurines because a lot of the times that is worth probably very good yes money. a lot of the times the japanese would emulate um, figurines that they would see made by the german porcelain makers and they would emulate them and make them very similar um, but these are marked n in a circle i believe that is ardult is the company that does it that way and actually the n in the circle i think think is meant to look like the Capodimonte mark, which is also an N with a crown, mm -hmm. and that is to stand for Naples. So that's kind of what they're trying to, to copy there. Um, but you can just tell that even though they're very nice, they're, they're thin, they're good quality porcelain, you can tell in the painting quality that they're not up to par with, say, A German figurine. Yeah. You can just see it in their faces. It's just focusing on my face. <laughs> Focus! There you go. So, spoiler alert, but there you go. And the German porcelain has more of a satiny look. Well, this to is a it. bisque. Yeah. This is a bisque because this is not glazed. That one is glazed. Is glazed. Yeah. 
They agree. The Conyers agree. Mm -hmm. We're right. Everyone who watches this video with birds are cursing us right now because their birds are going nuts. And the cats are like, what? Where's the bird? <laughs> Where's my snack? <laughs> I think that's it though. I think we got through all that stuff. We made uh, quick work of it. We did. We've got some good stuff. Um, like I said, some of, a lot of it is already listed. A lot of it is still going up. Um, so make sure you keep an eye on our eBay. Uh, we've got a ton of inventory coming in. Hopefully we will be moving into a new building soon when all that gets worked out. Soon. I could say things, but I'm not going to. Soon. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Well, we will see you tomorrow with Eric. Yes. Shopping. Shopping. Somewhere. <laughs> Later. Bye. My family calls it my superpower. It's my ability to see value in things that other people might overlook.